What will you do if you find yourself in the front seat of a deadly alien invasion? Will you hide, run away, or fight for your planet? This is the 2023 iteration of War of the Worlds, subtitled, The Attack. One night, three young astrologers Herbert, Hannah, and Oji are trying to locate a meteorite that crashed near them. According to Hannah, she saw a green meteor falling from the sky about two hours ago. Hearing it, Herbert questions how it can be green if meteors are supposed to be white or yellow. In turn, Ogi jokingly says that it must be the aliens, just like their professor, Dr. Stint is always mentioning. Herbert then says that he believes Dr. Stint and it is seconded by Hannah, who eventually asks Oji why he doesn't believe their professor when it comes to aliens. Oji answers that he respects their professor and her work, but he also mentions that she sometimes has out-of-the-box ideas, including aliens. Hannah, on the other hand, defends their professor and states that she is a leading astronomer in England, which is why her claims might not be far from the truth. She also remarks that they are lucky to have her in the UCL. While the two are arguing, Herbert seems to notice something from the woods but he cannot see anything. Because of that, he stops the two from bickering and tells them that they need to keep moving. But as they continue on their way, Herbert still keeps on noticing something that is following them. And to his confusion, he gets a glimpse of the thing moving alongside them, yet it is kind of in a camouflage state so he follows it. Not long after, Hannah and Oji realize that Herbert is no longer behind them. Due to that, they go back and look for him. Speaking of whom, Herbert is trying to track the thing that he saw. However, he finds nothing and later on gets scared by Oji suddenly appearing behind him. Hannah asks what he is doing and why he separated from them, to which Herbert tries to answer but he cannot find the right words to describe what he saw. Getting back on track, Herbert tells the two that he has a theory about the meteorite. Because of that, Oji prepares the video camera and points it at him. According to him, it might be the Martians that landed on Earth just recently. He says that it is impossible to be a meteor so they could be dealing with a Martian invasion sooner or later. Hearing this, Oji stops recording and argues that what he is saying is impossible. He insists that if ever life indeed existed on the Red Planet, it should be long extinct by now because he believes that Mars is nothing but a dusty and dead planet like a graveyard. Yet, Herbert likes to stick with his theory and is determined to prove to Oji that he is right. With that, they continue on their way. However, Hannah suddenly loses her phone signal so she cannot track the landing spot using her GPS. Because of that, the three decide to call it a night and go home. Luckily, the house of Herbert's mother is just around the corner, so they settle there for the night and just start early the next day. When they ride away, Herbert turns out to be right because an octopus-like alien just gets out of its camouflage state as it watches the three friends go away. The next morning, Herbert and Hannah wake up first, so they decide to play a prank on Oji while recording it. Just then, Herbert blows an air horn, suddenly waking up their sleeping friend. Shocked, Oji tries to catch him but he gets away immediately while Hannah is just laughing behind the camera. Oji then tells her to put the camera away. Meanwhile, as Herbert gets down, he gets at the table with his mother, asking if he will go out with his friends again. Upon saying yes, his mother asks what time he will be home and states that she wants him to follow after her at Leatherhead to see his uncle. Hearing this, Herbert says he will try, but his mother feels that he will not. Due to that, she insists that it is important for him to come because it is his uncle that helped them a lot during the loss of his father. This then triggers something in Herbert as he doesn't really want to talk about his father, causing him to walk out on her. Hannah witnesses this argument between Herbert and his mom so she tells her that she will talk to him. At this time, she finds him in his room, holding a walkie-talkie. Asked about it, Herbert confirms that it belonged to his dad. According to him, his father used to love everything about radios and signals and they just always listened to some sort of random frequencies before. Yet, their trip to memory lane is interrupted when Oji shows up. Upon seeing the walkie-talkie, he comments that it is so old and outdated. He then proceeds to say that aside from being bulky, it only has a limited range and it is not even accurate. With that, Oju leaves the two as he is already starving so they just follow after him. At the table, Herbert's mother asks how their research is going on, to which Oji brags that she will soon see their names on the news for a very great astronomical event. Just then, she tells them about the news she heard on the radio earlier about a meteor landing at Horsell Common. Hearing this, Herbert, Hannah, and Oji rush to their bike to reach the landing site as fast as they can. On their way, Herbert remarks that he hopes that it is not what he thinks it is. And Oji counters him again, confidently saying that it will not be ground zero for an alien invasion. After a while, the three finally arrive at the landing site, but it is already surrounded by bystanders. To make matters worse, the police are already in the area so they cannot just walk past them. 
Thinking quickly, Hannah suggests that they should go around the back to take a closer look without the police noticing them. Shortly, they come face to face with the object which clearly is not a meteorite. Based on its form and metallic appearance, it seems to be a spacecraft. And to their surprise, it suddenly opens and reveals an octopus-like alien creature inside. Scared, Hannah says that they need to go, but as the alien releases a cloud of smoke from its body, it seems to hypnotize Herbert for a moment. Because of that, a police officer catches them, just in time for the ship to close. At this time, the officer asks what they are doing inside the police cordon without any permission. According to Hannah, they are from the university and Dr. Stint sent them to investigate the recent landing site. Unfortunately for them, the police officer reveals that Dr. Stint herself is coming to investigate so their lie is already busted. He also comments that they are too young to be investigating such events, which clearly offends Hannah. While the officer is escorting them, Hannah asks Herbert if he is okay, to which he says yes. Yet, he is wondering if they should tell the officer what they saw. But as it turns out, he hears them talking so he asks them what they saw. Although hesitating, Alji reveals to the officer that they see an octopus-like creature shrouded in smoke inside the ship. Hearing it, the officer orders them to stay put while he talks to the other police in the area. When he is gone, Alji admits that Herbert is right, but none of them is sure if the aliens will actually start an invasion. Shortly, the officer comes back to tell the three that they will be moving the bystanders soon and that Dr. Stint will arrive any minute now. And, as if on cue, the astrologer shows up and is not actually surprised that they already beat her to the scene. She then confirms to the officer that she knows the three so they are now off the hook. At this time, Dr. Stint asks what they see and they tell her what they said to the officer. Herbert also adds that he got close to it and something tells him that they are not friendly. Knowing this, Dr. Stint tells the officer to not wait any longer and evacuate the civilians now. And to everyone's shock, the ship suddenly shows signs of movement. A reporter then arrives and asks Dr. Stint what is happening. Noticing this, Oti says that if the news about the ship goes live, many people will come to the site and it might get dangerous. Just then, a gigantic octopus-like alien emerges from the ship and it is way bigger than the one that the three saw inside. At first, everyone looks at it with awe as they see an alien for the very first time. But it ultimately turns into horror when it starts shooting at them, killing many people on sight. Because of this, everyone panics and runs away to safety, including Herbert, Hannah, and Oji. Upon finding a safe place to hide, Hannah wastes no time and starts to take a recording of the gigantic alien. After that, they go back to their bikes and ride back to Herbert's mom's place. On their way, they see another green alien ship crashing somewhere and they realize that what they just witnessed is only the beginning. Arriving home, Herbert immediately looks for his mother, but she has already gone to Leatherhead. Anxious, OG asks if they can get through the invasion alive, just in time for them to see fighter jets fly into the second landing site. Because of that, he gets some hope that the military can defeat the aliens yet Herbert doesn't really think that they can. Just then, OG turns on the television to watch some news, and the first thing they see is an interview with an insane pastor who blames humanity's sin for what is currently happening. The pastor then attacks the cameraman so they get away from him and interview Dr. Stin instead. The reporter asks what she thinks the Martians want, but the astrologer doesn't have any idea as well. According to her, they already attempted to establish communications but the aliens are not responding to them. When the reporter asks about the second landing, it is the military officer beside Dr. Stint that answers and tells everyone to stay indoors so they can deal with the threats properly. Unfortunately, the broadcast ended there as they completely lost reception. Oji tries to switch to other channels but all of them are dead. Because of that, Herbert tries to call his mom to know how things are going on Leatherhead but he doesn't have a phone signal as well. Hannah lends her phone to him and it is also dead just like Herbert's and also Oji's. Because of this, Hannah thinks that the satellites have been compromised. At this moment, Hannah and Oji start to worry about their parents too, who are in other parts of England. Herbert then cheers them up by stating that the aliens will take time before reaching their parents' places because Earth's gravity is three times stronger than Mars, so they should be moving slower. With that, they decide to just stay indoors, just like what the military says. In turn, Oji remarks that the military has state-of-the-art technology, so they probably have something in their armory to deal with the aliens. Yet, Herbert points out that they are dealing with life forms far more intelligent than humans. Some time later, while the two boys are asleep, Hannah notices a movement in the garden. Acting quickly, she wakes Herbert and Oji up so the three of them can confront whoever or whatever is hiding there. Luckily, it is just a soldier named Ben who is an artilleryman. Ben states that he is just looking for a place to hide so he can rest. 
Herbert then tells him to come inside where he shares with them what happened. According to him, his whole unit was completely wiped out by the aliens and he is the only survivor. Aside from it, Ben cannot really speak of anything as he is still shocked by what he just experienced. In the bathroom, he hears the gunshots and explosions outside and he cannot help but to relieve the trauma and survivor's guilt so he just ends up breaking down crying. After a while, when he finally collects himself up, he finally tells the three that it was just one tripod that wiped out his entire unit and an entire town like it was nothing. OG then questions if he knows what they want or at least where they are heading, but Ben didn't get anything from his recent encounter with them. Yet, he is sure that the tripods are not far away from where they are right now. At this time, Hannah drops the million dollar question and asks if they can count on the military or just get away as far as possible. And as she and Herbert expected, Ben suggests that they should just leave and honestly states that the military has no way of containing or defeating the tripods. However, Herbert just cannot leave because his mother is in Leatherhead, so he tells Hannah and OG to go with Ben and leave town. But the two decide to stick with him because they are a team. With that, they ask Ben if there's a safe route to Leatherhead, but he's not sure because he lost his communications with the military during the ditch. Luckily, Herbert's father's walkie-talkie is still working, and without any working satellite, it's their only chance to contact the nearest military units. Not long after, they manage to reach someone from a nearby military outpost who tells them that they need to evacuate immediately. Ben then tells him that they need to get to Leatherhead, but the soldier points out that the town next to it is already full of tripods. Before ending their call, the soldier reminds them not to use any petrol vehicle because the tripod can lock on exhaust trails. With all of the information at hand, the group decides to go around Weybridge and then to Leatherhead to avoid the tripods. After that, they ride their bicycles to the said town. After a while, they finally arrive at Weybridge where Ben regroups with other soldiers. According to a lieutenant, they must not continue to Leatherhead anymore because people there have been evacuated to London already. Hannah and Oji then ask about the places where their parents are, but the lieutenant doesn't have information about it at the moment. But what he's sure of is that the tripods were just landing at towns that are south of London. With that, the three finally get relieved of their worry about their parents and proceed to line up for evacuation as well. Shortly, Ben comes back to them and says that he already arranged a boat for the four of them as gratitude for taking him in. Just then, a tripod shows up but it is eventually taken down by the military. Unfortunately, more tripods arrive and attack them, overwhelming the military. The three of them are fine, but they cannot find Ben anywhere so they have to leave without them. Some time later, they decide to dock and find a shelter first when they encounter the insane pastor from the TV before. At first, he berates and blames the three in their generation, calling them all sinners. But Herbert and OG manage to convince him to just help them find a place for the night. And to their surprise, the pastor ends up tagging along with them. Unfortunately, he's more insane than they thought because he turns out to be murderous and perverted as he eyes Hannah. According to him, his God chose him to give his seeds to her when the time comes that humanity needs to repopulate. After a while, the pastor decides to take a nap and threatens to kill them if they disturb him. However, it doesn't take long for a tripod to show up. To make matters worse, the pastor is awakened and thinks that the three are planning to escape. Because of that, he is about to kill Herbert and Oji, but the tripod suddenly grabs and snatches him up. Acting quickly, the three hide until the tripod gets away. The next morning, they are awakened by Ben who's calling them through the walkie-talkie. After telling the three where they can find him, Herbert, Hannah, and Oji make their way to the woods where he is camping. According to Ben, things have changed a lot overnight since the seventh landing in Primrose Hill. The tripods turn out to be heading there and are collecting humans on the way. He says that the evacues in London were transferred to Belgium, while others are now gone into hiding. He suggests that they should do it too and just hole up in a sewer where the tripods will not find them. However, the two boys don't like the idea. Oji says he doesn't want to live in the sewers while Herbert wants to fight for Earth. Yet, Ben insists that they cannot do anything right now and is surprisingly seconded by Hannah. Thinking about it for a while, Herbert decides to continue on Primrose Hill and his decision is supported by Hannah. According to them, they must know why the tripods are collecting humans so humanity can join forces to fight them. Ben then sees the sense of what Herbert and Hannah are saying so he goes with their plan as well. This leaves OG outvoted so he has no other choice but to come with them. Later that night, they finally reach their destination and see how dire the situation is. With that, they take positions and separate into two groups. Herbert and Hannah go around to check why the tripods are collecting humans while Oji and Ben stay behind to watch over the tripods. However, what Herbert and Hannah discover horrifies them. 
As it turns out, the aliens are breeding on Earth, and they are using humans as some sort of food or fertilizer for the tripod eggs. Terrified, Hannah tells Ben what they saw, insisting that they need to leave immediately. Unfortunately, OG is spotted by a tripod and it grabs him. Desperate to save him, Ben lets himself get captured, revealing that he just pulled a pin out of a bomb. And just like that, he sacrifices himself to save OG. Defeated and devastated, the three friends have no other choice but to hide in the sewers, just like what Ben suggested before. There, everyone is on edge and OG ends up blaming Herbert for Ben's death because he is the one who wants to act as a hero to save humanity. Hannah then stops him from arguing, stating that all of them are to blame as they all take part in making those decisions. A little later, Hannah asks Herbert what they will do when they leave the sewers the next day. And for the first time, Herbert admits that he doesn't know what to do. With that, they leave tomorrow's problem to tomorrow and rest for the night. But as they get back to the surface the next day, they are confused to find the dead tripods. Taking precautions, OG throws rocks at them to check if they're just plain dead, but they seem to be actually dead. Just then, Dr. Stint and the military show up, saying that she's happy to see the three of them alive. At this time, Hannah asks what happened to the aliens, to which Dr. Stint says that it is just natural science that turns out to be the answer to their problem. According to the astrologer, the microorganisms and bacteria that humans are accustomed to living with as natural resident of Earth are what kills the aliens. All this time, the air they breathe and the water they're consuming is what is killing them. And for more good news, Herbert's mother is perfectly safe and she's on the phone now waiting for her son. The movie ends with the three being taken home, not noticing that an alien egg survives the counterattack of Mother Nature. War of the Worlds The attack is sadly an underwhelming film. It somehow started full of potential in terms of plot, but it eventually falls out all the way to the end. With the uncompelling characters and the anticlimactic resolution, the film, unfortunately, fails to give a satisfying ending. Despite the promise of a sequel, making people come back for it seems to be a challenge.